Hi everyone, welcome back. The Behringer Ultra Voice Pro High Performance Voice Processor, the model VX2000, this unit right here, that sits along my other mic preamplifiers, is a great mic pre that I mainly use for voiceover work as well as narration to my YouTube videos. Matter of fact, the audio you're hearing now is coming directly from my VX2000. Although the Behringer Ultra Voice Pro VX2000 is a legacy gear, that means it's no longer manufactured by Behringer, you can still find them on the second-hand used market at a very good price, around $100 or so. It's a great sounding mic pre for the purpose of voiceovers as well as vocal. It does have several modules that I'm going to be discussing in this video and later on do audio demonstration as well. As the name suggests, Ultra Voice Pro VX2000 is mainly aimed for recording vocals but of course you can also record other instruments. But each module section is dedicated mainly to vocal processing. You can take this video as video manual for the unit. Because as we know, Behringer, even though they do manufacture quite a great range of products, they really lack on their manuals and instructions. So if you like this video, give me the thumbs up. Oops. Wrong, wrong, wrong timing, wrong timing. Let's get onto my screen and I'll go through the slideshow demonstrating each module for you. Here is my vocal chain for using the Behringer Ultra Voice Model VX2000 for all of my voiceover works as well as the narration for my YouTube videos. I do have a dynamic microphone connected as well as a wireless microphone into the VX2000 and the output comes into my audio interface where I have my headphones connected and through USB connected to my laptop. At the back of the unit, this is how I have things connected. The microphone going into the mic input and my wireless microphone into the line input. And to the front panel, I am able to select the microphone or my wireless microphone receiver as line level input and the output is connected directly to my audio interface's line level input. The Behringer Ultra Voice High Performance Voice Processor Mic Pre VX2000 comprises of several modules. We have the discrete in vintage input module, then we have the expander or the gate module, we have a tube emulation module, followed by the optocompressor module, and the voice optimize equalization module, then the Opto Diesa, and finally the Master Fader output. Starting with the discrete vintage input module, we can use the gain level to adjust the incoming level of either the microphone as well as the line level input. Using the line button, we can select the XLR microphone input or the line level input. This is quite handy that we can switch between microphone and line level input without connecting or disconnecting any cables. If we are using a condenser microphone, then we can apply a 48 volt phantom power to power the condenser microphone. Although it's not common, but the option is there, the phase inverse or polarity inverse button. This is quite useful if you have two microphones and they are in out of phase or you have phase issues and you can apply the phase inverse option to correct the polarity. We can also engage the low cut feature. This allows us to get rid of any low frequency rumble from picked up by the microphone. And we can engage it by pressing the button on. And then we can select the frequency that we want to filter out. And the frequency range is anywhere between 15 Hertz up to 360 Hertz. Any signal below this frequency are cut at 12 dB per octave. We do have two indicators that indicate the signal level coming in with the green LED. And if the signal level is too loud, we get the clip red LED light up. We can engage the expander or the gate using the in-out button. 
we can use the threshold to adjust the level that we want any signal below the threshold level to be either expanded or gated. The depth allows us to adjust how much of gain reduction we want when we are engaged as an expander. When we press the gate button, this turns the expander into a gate. That means any signal below the threshold will be cut down. The difference between expander and a gate, to simply explain, the expander works as a nice sliding door that opens up and closes, where the gate is like a guillotine. It just abruptly cuts it off. We can use the gain reduction level meter to see how much of the expander or the gate reducing the incoming signal. We can engage the tube emulation by pressing the in-out button. The dry level sets the amount of drive or distortion or saturation to be applied to the incoming signal. There are two options to apply the drive or the distortion to the in incoming signal. By pressing the full bandwidth button, this allows us to apply the distortion or the drive to the whole frequency range of the incoming signal. When disengaged, we can select a frequency using the tuning that our drive is applied to. This allows us to select what frequency we want to actually enhance or put some distortion or grid into our signal. The signal LED as well as the red clipping LED is a good indication of our incoming signal. The Opto Compressor module is a simplified compressor that we can use to compress our incoming signal. And we can engage this module by pressing the in-out button. Any signal above the threshold level that we have set will actually get compressed. Hard ratio or moderate ratio is a selection that we can have to adjust the ratio of the compression of the incoming signal. I personally find the moderate level is quite nice to have on vocals. We don't have specific attack time selection, but we have a moderate or fast attack selection. Again, for vocals, to have nice body, moderate option is a good one, but you can also use the fast attack if you want to really compress the vocals. The release time we can select from fast, medium or slow, depending on how quickly we want to release the compressed signal back into the original level. We can use the output makeup gain to add any loss gain due to compression. Due to compression, we also lose some upper frequencies. So the enhancer will allow us to add back those frequencies that we might have lost and make the signal bright again. And we can use the gain reduction level meters to find out how much the compressor is reducing the incoming signal. And the voice optimized EQ is another great simple to use equalizer aimed for vocals. And we can engage it with the in out button. We can use the tuning frequency selection to select a frequency that we want to cut or boost. We can select the frequency that we can enhance it to make give it a little bit more body. Or if the signal is too muddy, we can select that frequency and then we can reduce it. The warmth level adjusts the gain or the reduction of the tuning frequency that we have selected. Presence is sort of like a mid or high mid frequency EQ point, which is set at 1.7 kilohertz, that we can use to add a little bit more presence. Or if we have a nasally vocal, we can turn that down as well. And the breadth, which is set around 8 kilohertz, can give us a little bit more air or a brightness. Or if it's too breathy, we can actually use it to reduce some of that breath noise. Absence is set around 4 kilohertz, and this is great to actually reduce some of the vocal harshness. Some microphones actually have a bump around 4 kilohertz to give the microphone a little bit more brighter sound. But if this becomes really harsh, you can engage the absence and this will reduce the harsh frequency. We can use the in-out button of the Opto de to engage the de -esser. Every vocal, every person has a different frequency point for their S's. You can use the cut frequency to adjust and find the frequency that the vocal is introducing sibilians. And then using the threshold, we can reduce those sibilians to nicer clean S's. And every time the Opto de is engaged and reducing the sibilians, the active LED comes on indicating that it's actually working. 
And finally, the master fader. This gives us sort of from off to plus 10 dB of gain as the main output. And we can use our output level meter to make sure that we are not clipping or distorting of the next stage of our vocal chain, which is your audio interface's input or the mixer's input. I now have all of the modules turned off and as you can see, you might uh, also hear some difference in my audio quality as well as the levels. So I'm just going to enable each module and then I'm going to go through adjusting some of it so you can actually hear the difference, especially the tube, uh, the expander, the tube emulation and the voice opto EQ as well as the deesser. So let's turn on the discrete vintage inputs low cut so that way it clean out some of the lower end and you can hear the difference as I switch it on and off. So at the moment it's off so there might be a little bit low noise and then turn it on. It gets a little bit quicker. It's getting rid of anything that I have set uh, below about 65 hertz which is uh, really great. And let's turn on the expander. I'm just going to go quiet so you'll be able to hear my laptop's uh, fan that's running in the background and then I'll uh, punch it through. As you can see it went pretty much dead quiet. I have the depth medium level so it's not reducing too hard too quickly and then the threshold is set correctly to the level and we can see, I'm not sure how it's going to turn up in the video, you can see some uh, red LEDs going down as the gain reduction happens. Next, go to the next module, the uh, tube emulation. I'm just going to enable it. You might hear my voice go a little bit louder because it is emphasizing. And now I've got tube emulation turned on. You can hear how my voice completely changed because of the settings that I have. I'm not using a full bandwidth, so if I use a full bandwidth, my voice again changes because now it's uh, driving the whole frequency range. What I normally prefer to select the range that I want my vocal, my clarity to be in, uh, which is tuned uh, correctly at about um, 5 kilohertz or so, just below that one, and it is just a tiny bit turned on. And uh, let's next turn on the opto compressor. Let's turn on the auto compressor and now you can actually see my voice getting a little bit louder. That's because of the makeup gain. And again, the threshold that I have set, it's given me a gain reduction of about minus uh, 4 to minus 6 dB as I go loud when I'm actually talking. Uh, medium release that I have. Uh, for vocals, I prefer not to have a uh, hard ratio. I want that to be soft knee rather than, uh, you know, like a, level, a limiter clipping it. And uh, I want that to, to be slow attack as well rather than fast attack. Again, this all depends on the person and the vocal that you are recording. And the output, I'm just giving about the points, uh, plus 6 dB of uh, gain because it is reducing about uh, minus 6 dB of gain reduction. And then the enhancer, just a little bit bright, but not too bright. Next, I'm going to turn on the voice optimized EQ. Let's uh, put that in. And now we have my optimized EQ. I do have a little bit of boost, about 220 hertz. This gives a little bit of body for my voice, so it gets really deeper. And that's what you want for voiceovers. You want that uh, sort of deepness, warm sound coming through. Uh, it's probably giving about uh, no more than 2 or 3 dB gain in that area. Presence, maybe 1 dB gain presence at that frequency. And I've got the breadth a little bit higher. So it's uh, uh, it enhancing the top end. So giving a little bit of air in there. And our final module, the Opto DSer. Let's uh, Actually, before I engage in, let's do some Sibilians test. And... Sally sells seashells on the seashore. Lots of S's there. Let's uh, turn it on. Let's do the test again. You can hear how my voice completely changed and all the S's disappeared. So let's try that again. Sally sells seashells on the seashore.
nice and clean S's without too much sibilance. And that's how I've actually adjusted. And every now and then you might hear the S, 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 S. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the S, every time I say the uh, active LED comes on, indicating that it's actually working. Again, the frequency you need to adjust to the person that's actually using and adding those S's. And final module is the master output, which at the moment is plus one dB. That's feeding in to my audio interface. I know for most people, the gate or the expander, uh, the opto compressor and the EQ is pretty self-explanatory. Let's try the tube emulation because that is something you probably want to hear. And I'm just going to increase the level. And uh, now I'm at the warm. You can see my voice is getting a little more gritty and distorted and that is tube emulation as I said it's not a real tube in there and I'm just gonna go all the way hot and that is hot um, for the frequency that I have selected if, let's go to full bandwidth and this is the full bandwidth and you can definitely tell how distorted my vocals are even though uh, there's not the output is not clipping or anything and then let's just turn it down and to the level that I normally like just a tiny bit and to the frequency that I want to enhance with that tube emulation be gentle with the tube emulation because it can really distort your audio especially if you are recording or printing with the setting. Throughout this video that you've been hearing, the, ex the expander module has been working as an expander. So let's just turn it into a gate as well. And this is a gate. And you can tell how it abruptly cuts off. And it can sometimes, depending on the threshold level that you set, it can cut, cut it out and uh, yeah, so that's how the gate works, where in vocal, in most of the time, I would like to have it as an expander, so that it's like turning the volume down of the input gradually and gently without abruptly cutting it off like the gate does. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music as well as voiceovers using the Behringer's Ultra Voice Pro high performance voice processor, the model VX2000. Till next video, cheerio.